Do we usually have the, the lights? The, we do uh, have the lights on. Turn them on. <laughs> I feel like yesterday we didn't. I, I feel like yesterday we didn't as well, but... Oh god! <laughs> oh god! Now I'm gonna look all greasy. What? The vibe change? No, bro. I'm that definitely more greasy. Than you, bro. You're doing fine. You're doing fine. Bruh. You guys are. Should I turn? <laughs> Making me check myself. Should you turn right? just one of them off? Unfortunately, they no. are all on the same switch, bro. Okay, then just turn them all off. <laughs> turn them all off. off. Hey, why? Turn them all off. Let's do. Let's Did do. The, the pot because, because pot Jesse pot looks too greasy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then just put makeup on him. Bro. <laughs> she doesn't. She doesn't wear makeup, bro. She's just always beautiful, bro. Oh. Oh. oh dang. That's oh. Damn. Oh, thanks. Man. Thanks for the setup, bro. <laughs> hey, that was yeah. that was nice. That was all right, nice. bro. All let's right. get this thing started. Okay. Welcome to the Not A Genius Podcast. I'm your host, Jesse. I'm your co-host, Josh. And today, we got Lena Owen on the show. I met her out in Scottsdale. Met her across the country. And somehow we end up here in Claymont, Delaware, where she's only about an hour and a half. I'm so sorry about that traffic. No, don't worry about it. I was playing some really good music along the way and really bobbing to it. So, all good. I can't tell. What kind of music do you like to listen to? EDM. Yo, let's go. <laughs> let's go. I'm going to EDC Orlando. Oh, <clears throat> I have some trips, so can't go. No. Yeah, it sucks. Dang. Do yeah. you go to Coachella? Do you go to any of the other EDC things? No, Um, I only got into it like recently. So I only go if it's conveniently like at times when I'm free. And a lot of times I'm not free. So tell me about EDC. Like. What got you into it? Why? You, I bet it's the gym. EDM. I bet it's literally the gym. EDM. Like you're listening to like you hard the, style as EDM. you're deadlifting. Did I say no. the gym? Did I say EDC. gym? You said EDC. EDC. No way. Yeah, EDM. That's okay. That's okay. Yeah. No, um, I got into it when my friend took me to New York. We had a blast. He took me raving to the for the first time. I really liked it. Um. I think this is low key a very PG thirteen type of <laughs> podcast. It's not PG thirteen. We're rated say too R. Much. No, we are rated R. <laughs> say whatever you want to say. Whatever you, yeah. whatever. whatever. Let's just say, um, went raving, never looked back. I think I might rave for like another ten years or so. Another ten years. Yeah, that's a solid run. Yeah. You got your whole twenties ahead of you. Yeah. So, tell us a little bit about your origin story. Kind of like what you came from and yeah. then what got you into what you're doing today. And like, I'm really impressed. You know, you're, I don't, you could tell them your age if you feel like sharing about your age because it's just a flex. Yeah, it is kind of a flex. Um, okay, so my name is Lena Owen, born and raised in Philly, and I am 20 years old. So I dropped out at 18 and went straight into. Uh, selling as a realtor and I was motivated by Graham Stephan so I watched him like every single day when I was 18 and learning about how he grew up and how he became a became a millionaire when he was 25 um, it just made me realize like hey like we're both human beings in fact I have a lot more opportunities than him because we have social media um on our side so that's how i got into being a realtor at 18. <clears throat> so i was also a finance major i actually did attend college for one semester and i was a finance major i loved everything i learned it's just that i felt like you know in all reality a lot of us just want to make 100k like that's our american dream right so i come from an immigrant background and making 100k to me was enough and i felt like you know if someone were to tell me like, okay, Lena, like I give you four years to make a hundred K, I feel like four years is a long ass time, you know? And I graduated from high school during the pandemic. So I felt like, damn, like a lot of these teachers, a lot of these um, professionals, like, you know, in college, like they're not prepared for the pandemic. They don't really know how to teach classes. I feel like quality of education wasn't really the best during the pandemic. And I felt like I wasn't getting um, what I felt like is my money's worth. So 
um, again, a tenant one semester dropped out. And while I was um, in class grinding out my first semester, I also took my realtor license course as well. So as soon as I completed that, I became a licensed realtor turning 19 and then dropped out. And from there, I worked full time as a realtor for six months and reinvested all of my income, which was around $40,000, back into a mentorship and also my first arbitrage unit, which was in Charlotte, North Carolina. So um, from there, I just kept on reinvesting all of my income into arbitrage units, raised capital from friends and family, and I was hired by some investors to set up some of their own arbitrage units. I actually flew to Idaho for the first time without my family, well, flying anywhere without my family at 19. And I was out in Idaho for probably a month um, working as a project manager, which basically entails setting up Airbnbs at a fixed rate. So it was my job to um, order all of the furniture, hiring the cleaner, the handyman, and my job is to basically outsource and to set up these units in a certain time frame and i was hired for 10 units within that month and made over ten thousand dollars so um after completing a few units i was already out there for a month i missed my family came back home continued to sell real estate and sold my first what i call like a six-figure earning airbnb property and that one is up in the poconos of pennsylvania and it generated 19000 in July, around 14 k profit, and I took home around 30% or so, so that's around 4 k My client took home 10 k Found them through Facebook. I added my friends' parents as friends, and I just kept them doing that for six months straight, and that's how I created my database. Um, I didn't have any friends to really sell properties to, considering everyone was from high school, right? So was pretty consistent with that. <clears throat> From there, got into coaching because a lot of people kept on reaching out to me wanting to do arbitrage, and I already had around four units during the time, making 1.5k uh, cash flow passively through monthly rental rather than short-term rental. And I'll talk more about like why I switched to that type of business model. But um, I took probably 10 clients in within two weeks and made $50,000 the end of that year. Um, and then project managing for those clients as well, uh, project management. It's like a side hustle. I do like here and there, you know, mm -hmm. most of my income comes from the arbitrage units and also management during the time. And also I sold properties, you know, like all throughout the year. So I made like a hundred K in my first year at 19. But now at this point, a lot of my income do come from coaching but there's an end goal, you know, like I'm trying to reinvest all, all my money back into buying real estate. And um, yeah, going back, like I wanted to grow a better coaching business than what I had because I joined probably like four or five different mentorships. <clears throat> and I felt like a lot of them didn't offer the resources I wanted. But my purpose of joining so many mentorships and spending thousands of dollars was to learn my market, you know, like to learn other people's products and see what they're doing well in and, and what they're lacking in. And I also do interviews with other mentees within these different programs to see like what they like and what they don't like. And I curated my own program that I felt like would work best with all different um, types of people. <clears throat> so I went into debt, credit card debt, maybe up to 46000 because I wanted to join this mentorship so bad. I wanted to grow my own coaching business and, you know, bring value to people and, you know, help them with their journey the same way that I went through my journey, but not as painful. Um, made the money back in like two months. <laughs> wow. So um, now I'm hitting probably towards 90 k I hit 90 k revenue last month, profit margins. 75% or so. So I took home at least 60,000. Um, I do feel a sense of guilt because I'm making more money from coaching than my actual arbitrage units. But again, there's an end goal. I still want to buy properties. I still want to be an investor. I still want to give value to people, you know, and I still want to build a strong community that can support each other rather than just like making money, you know? So, um, 
yeah, my goal right now is to buy a resort using seller financing right now. <laughs> wow, you said so much. And I think everyone's mind is just absolutely blown. Long, like, yeah. you know, so I just want to pull the layers back. Like, you're an onion, right? So let's <laughs> let's let's just start peeling the onion and okay. go layer by layer. So can you please like tell us how as a high schooler did you like come into this mindset, this realization that okay, I'm gonna go to college, but at any point during that process, did you think that you were gonna drop out of college so that you can go pursue your own thing? Or did you think I'm gonna complete college and then after that I'm gonna evaluate my situation and then decide whether or not I'm going to go the entrepreneurial route or am I going to go the corporate route? Mm. And did you ever feel like you had any obligations to, I know you're an Asian American, you're Southeast Asian American. And so am I, and my parents dream was for me to graduate college. So did you ever, I I wanted to ask like the follow-up question um, that you can answer afterwards. Like, did you ever feel any guilt that you were laying down your parents um, by dropping out of college? So. Yeah. First part of the question is like, how did you get your mindset, you know, to where it was? And then like, how did your parents react to it? Yeah. So, um, I was already financially smart, um, mainly because I felt like all throughout high school, I wasn't allowed to even go out with my friends or buy like bubble tea and like have like a typical teenage type of experience because I felt like I like my life was controlled by my family and they're immigrants you know like they don't believe in having fun they believe that anything you do it has to be towards your education or towards your future towards like having a significant other in um a significant other in the long run so when I'm like hey mom like I want to go out with my friends and buy like bubble tea they're like what's the point in doing that you know that has nothing to do with education so I felt like there's that. And then also like wanting nice things, you know, like I see all my friends having nice shoes, having nice clothes and all my clothes even now, but growing up, everything was from Ross. Um, <clears throat> everything was hand-me-downs. So I've always wanted nice things and like money was always a problem for us. And my mom would also use money as leverage a lot. Like, oh, like if you want this, you cannot go out, you know, like if you want to go on like nice trips with with our family you can't go out you know so money was always used in like a negative way i guess to like hold me back and so like within i think when i was like 16 i wanted to work on my own and make money so that once i graduate from high school i can go straight to like a dorm and like live my own life um my parents were like we're not going to support you financially or like as parents emotionally if you choose to attend college um and go to a door meaning like I meant like to actually move out okay they want me they wanted me to attend college but they did not want me to move out but I was like you know what I'll financially take care of myself so like money was definitely a big thing for me um on top of that I lived on top of a store almost my entire life so I didn't live in like a typical household, like, like with like a yard or anything. Like I did live in what was considered a red, a red district area. So, um, like we have corner shops and we would live on top of those like mixed shops. use apartment. basically. Yeah. 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 Um, it's like house hacking, but like not house hacking. Did they hacking. own the shop? Yeah. We, we own the shop. You guys ran the shop? Was yeah. that your guys' family shop business? Was yeah. We sell alcohol in like really bad areas. Big ass park for Martians. What are you talking about, man? What do you mean? You guys are making money. Yeah, right. but like I don't see the money. Oh, we don't like. They were had like a very scarce. They had a very scarce I mindset, didn't even right? Know how much money we made, or like, like I didn't know how successful my parents were until like a year ago, because they keep on reinvesting all of their money back into real estate. I never saw that money, and we never went on vacations. We never had nice things. So I live in a very frugal environment, but I was also taught to be very smart with money. Wow, that's pretty crazy. Yeah. So like your parents are entrepreneurs or business owners, but they, would you say that they had a bit of a scarce mindset and they didn't really know how to enjoy the fruits of their labor? Or Yeah, technically my mom is the uh, entrepreneur. My dad is a house dad. 
Okay. Yeah. So my mom came to America as a single mother in a way because they were married, but they were separated for like three years because she wanted to come here first. And my dad had, had to take like a few years before he actually came to America. So she had me and she only had me alone for like a few years, you know, and she bought her first property within like the first two years of having me and we house hacked for like maybe 10 years like like officially house hacked like we had people that rented out our third floor you know <clears throat> but yeah like um with my mom she came over here like with the assumption that it would be easy to make money and then she found out it was a lot more harder than she thought because of the language barrier you know, and she didn't know how like taxes work or like how like buy anything work, you know. Um, she sold clothes back in Cambodia. It's not like we own like a whole factory, you know, but she definitely had like like a business mindset, you know. So coming over here, she continued to sell clothes and then she upgraded towards owning like corner shops, selling alcohol, but she had to choose like bad neighborhoods because our clientele were people that like to drink. You know, and if you think about it, that puts me in a very unsafe environment. And I was in that unsafe environment almost my entire life. You know, like I, I had to look left and right every time I go home. And I could never bring friends home because I was too embarrassed. Um, like, I was too embarrassed with how they would see me after they saw how I lived. And, you know, I was catcalled like every morning mm -hmm. for like nearly 20 years of my life, you know. Um, now I live in a nice home, but that home is used as leverage. Like my mom only bought a nice home because I threatened to leave. Like I was like, hey, like I can't live in this unsafe environment anymore. Like I have ambitious goals and it's not motivating and I have to leave. Like I can't be here. That's the reason why I dropped out and why I wanted to make money like what actually pushed me to go into entrepreneurship and drop all of my plans to go into medicine because I wanted to be a doctor for my family um was because I wanted money so bad so I would search up on YouTube how to make money and then I saw like a million videos on how to make money and different side hustles you know and that is what got me started into entrepreneurship and what motivated me was to leave my family and to leave that unsafe environment and to actually have an apartment and to be on my own so was being an agent your first route of entrepreneurship or was there like something before that there was something before that um so for nearly a year i made websites kind of like nate o'brien i think oh yeah do <laughs> you know so, nate he's so um yeah i have his number oh, okay gotcha he lived in philly for a little bit yeah he's still or Red he's He's like uh, traveling now, right? Yeah, okay, in cool. like a van. I think so. I think that was a while he ago. He was in a van. Now I don't know where where he's at. He's buying properties everywhere. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Tell us about your venture before. Yeah, so um, I started my first business when I was in high school, actually. Um, and what I got into was SEO marketing. So I would purchase these websites, do copywriting, and then um, SEO optimize them. I actually paid $5,000 to learn how to do this. So essentially, I was creating these um, t kind of like online real estate, you know. So I would rank these niche, these like niche websites. For example, I was niche into lawn care, landscaping, and tree service. Like one tree service deal could be five thousand, ten thousand, twenty thousand dollars because you know, like cutting trees, it's a dangerous job. So um, I would create these websites in different cities of population around like three hundred k or so. You know, like not too big. Um, I would create these websites and rank them up for certain um, high search keywords, like oh, tree service in Kansas City. You know, so anyone that searches up like, OK, tree service in Kansas City, they would see my website and they automatically call my website. Then I would connect them to a local um, tree service company, provide them those leads. And then I get 20 percent commission from those deals that they close. 
So that was wow. my business for the first Whoa. year. It's just that like I didn't like it because I didn't like the cheese service like industry, and <laughs> I I was why not? <laughs> it's because like. I was like 18 year, like 18 years old and my voice was very soft and I wasn't like like I felt like if I had like a one-on-one -on -one mentor maybe I would have continued but it was kind of like a group coaching thing kind of there was like 6000 people in here so I didn't have that one-on-one -on -one support you know so I woke up every morning with anxiety every single time I get like calls coming through because I, mm -hmm. I would have to talk to them first and then connect them to a local person. You know what I mean? Dude, I know exactly how you feel yeah. because when I first started my entrepreneurial journey, I was the one that was cold calling. I was the one that was the acquisition manager for like my one person solo business yeah. and like I needed to make the money. I got to go get the houses. So I'm calling these like retired landlords or whatever. Yeah. Because I know my VA already filtered through the leads. And I already have the business. I just need to go reach out, follow up, and yeah. then I can get the houses. But I was so nervous every single time. Like my, I would call them from my personal cell phone. Like yeah. right now, nowadays, my business, we would never do that. Yeah. But I would talk to these people and just like, hello, uh, I'm just trying to yeah. <laughs> trying to get a, get a house. I'm, just, I'm just yeah. like, I'm, I'm like, yeah, yeah. I'm like 18, 19, 19 years old. I don't know what they thought, why they thought I could afford this house, but I was just like, no, I got the money. I can, no, I could put, it was, they created a finance deal. They created a creative finance deal for me on my first deal. Yeah. It was a like 20% down. And I gave him $7,000. It was like, <laughs> somehow yeah. I got into these problems. I was like, dude, yeah. that's so crazy. But nowadays, dude, I don't want to get on the phone. Nowadays, I'm just telling Josh, wow, bro, like yeah. Josh, not Josh is telling me what's going on on the other side of the line and i'm just like no josh you need to tell him this this and that and it's like because yeah, i know the theory of the game yeah, he's so he's saying it like it's that easy yeah. I'm, I'm saying I'm, it like i'm just oh. getting messed up on the phone <laughs> oh my god so i'm sure like if you had like a coaching or a coaching service for like people aspiring to be tree um seo connectors and you were to tell them exactly what to say and they were so nervous. Yeah. You could tell them exactly what to yeah. say, but it's just like you yeah. would never want to do it yourself anymore. Yeah. So kind of that's what's happening. Like I we yeah. do a sales call like every single morning now at like yeah. 10 a.m. I'm just like, Josh, what's going on? It's like, no, this person it, is telling me this. Yeah. And it's like I can't get the house on. I was like, yeah. bro, tell them this, this, and that in the third. And it's like, okay. And then I send a coach or I send a sales training to Josh and Josh is like, oh, that was good. That was like, really good. So yeah. All I'm doing now is just giving the resources away. I was like, I mean, some? it is easier than like what I was doing before. It was easier like, than what you were doing before? Because like these people are somewhat warm. Before it was just straight up cold call. Do you know what Josh was doing what? before? He was, when he got, he gave him a realtor back in February. Yeah. And tell him, Josh. And for like, yeah, so I got licensed in February and for like three months straight, I cold called like for sale by owners, expireds. Like Volcom 7 type of light, like, you know uh, Volcom like, 7? No, I know. For like three, <laughs> three to four hours a day, Monday through Friday. He was in a cold Saturday. call mentorship as well. This guy yeah. was in a cold call accountability it was pretty group. Like I would literally have to like, I would, I would wake up at like 4 a.m., read go to the gym get in the office by like 7 45 start calling at eight and i'd literally like <laughs> i take my shoes off i'd be in a cold calling booth and i'd have to like stand up and like jump up and down because i was like so nervous oh my god i get that yeah. so yeah i don't think it really ever gets any better but see like during the time we didn't even have any like coaching calls for cold calling or like just calling in general we had more like mindset coach and that's not enough. And also like I didn't have an accountability partner at all. I was on my own. I was actually actually the youngest person within that community as well. Everyone was like in their like late 20s, you know, mm -hmm. and I was only like 18, you know, and I made like 20 of these websites. So I think it costed me ten thousand dollars, but I sold it for twenty five k the end of that year. Oh my I was gosh! Oh what? That's crazy. crazy. What were your taxes like? <laughs> for 2021? Listen, I was um, considered a 
dependent. The IRS. Uh, oh, okay. The IRS is not watching. <laughs> so <laughs> not when you put no, no. five grand into it, was your were your parents like, what are you doing with your money? Or I didn't tell. Yeah, seriously, how did you get five grand? Yeah. Like, seriously, like, where did this money come from? Yeah. So, um, for like a month straight, I applied to different like scholarships. I think I applied to over two hundred, and then I made Whoa. over. You use your scholarship like, money for ten k. Yeah, but. I mean, they don't track that. Dude, <laughs> if I could take my FAFSA student loans and go dish it into my business, 100% would. First of all, they're they're paying me for education. This yeah. is education. You're right. Yeah. It's just not the type not of education like that they that thought they it was going to go to. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> you know? And like at the end of the day, it's like if you want to help people, <laughs> you need to help yourself first. <laughs> you still got student loans or no? No. I don't have any debt. Bro, dude, that's how you can find private money. Just hit up a bunch of smart high schoolers and, and you <laughs> go and apply use their for student the... loans, bro. Yeah. Yeah. What's it called? Student loan arbitrage? That could be a new thing. No, like people would hate me for it if I talked about it like that. You know, like I, I technically <laughs> didn't use like um like scholarship money. Yeah, but it was for it was for education though. Okay. Yeah. People, well, what do you mean when you say people would hate you for this if you talked about it like that? Because I know for a fact that they would say like you know that money could have been going towards like people that it's oh all right, wait, wait, wait. No, all, right, all right all right so i was looking through your instagram like in the beginning of the week and well actually i looked through it the week before that and i was i like i don't know if you deleted it or like maybe i was just tripping but i saw like haters in your in your instagram reels and it was like it was this one like the one where you're like 19 dropped out blah blah, blah. and i saw one of the comments and it was like like you're the reason why rent's so expensive. Yeah. So how does that like affect you? How do you deal with that? I ignore it. You ignore it. No, we saw you respond. Yeah, to Yeah, I it, saw apparently. you respond to like <laughs> one, oh, I, and I was I like, I hire people. You hire people for me. Really? Yeah, it really helps with the algorithm. You know, it brings it brings responding people to back the in. hate comments. Because like I get a lot of hate on TikTok, and they can easily ban me. You know what I mean? Like there's there's points on it. It's like okay, if so many people like report me on there like i can definitely be taken down but it's a lot more harder on ig for sure and also like i just learned to not care because i can't change what i've already done you know what i mean and also like if you're in real estate you are pro capitalism it really is it, it, is, it, it, it is, is it is what it is and also like my <laughs> yeah. my end goal is to meet more people like you who are within this industry like me right i don't care about the 1 million people that aren't within this industry that don't that don't understand how money works that don't understand how the economy works overall you know so like i have a lot of friends in the finance tiktok community and they admire the work i do yeah. and these are the people that i like to surround myself with so if a million people like typical consumers dislike me because they think i'm raising rent there's bigger issues out here like maybe like large hotels and gentrification that actually do affect their yeah. rents but i'm not saying that like what i do don't affect them it definitely does affect them but i also know that like it's easier to target me because i'm technically like one of them you know but if i'm a big corporation i feel like they wouldn't attack me as hard, you know, because it seems like I'm in like a different level or in like a different circle, you know? Yeah, no, I 100% agree because it's just like the government spends the money in the most inefficient ways possible. And plus there's a lot of uh, corruption in between everything like people's buddies owning construction companies and contracting out to this and that and then being like a silent partner, being an angel investor in <laughs> yeah. like these stupid companies yeah. and then getting the money on the back end from the government so they're literally robbing the government mm -hmm. and nobody's talking about that and nobody cares exactly. about that and i'm not do, am i gonna get canceled like it's just like Maybe, a, is this a, is this no a i might i might episode. get canceled but everything i'm saying is is something i already talked about with everyone that i feel like i actually care about within yeah. my everyday life i really don't care about being canceled honestly if this podcast or like you know, our content gets out to the people that we want it to reach. And even if it resonates with one person, two people, three people, and I'm just like, yeah. it changes their lives. Then I think that 
that makes a whole lot of a difference. Yeah. Like even if I'm just sending this podcast out to my newsletter and then people are clicking on it and people locally in my environment are doing spectacular things that they wouldn't do otherwise because they didn't know that, oh, a relationship with me or a relationship with Josh or my partner, Kenny, is like possible. Yeah. That you just reach out to people who know what they're doing inside of the community um, because what we're trying to do, we're trying to do like a real estate meetup where we're trying yeah. to bring people in from the inner city. Yeah. Like Wilmington is like inner city, kind of yeah. comparable to Philadelphia. And we want to teach like creative financing. We want to teach yeah, real estate. I'm just like the reason why you're gentrified in your neighborhood is because you don't own it. Yeah. And it's like, I know tons of black people who are real estate investors as well. And they would say the same thing. It's just like, well, if you don't want to get kicked out of your neighborhood, you better start figuring out how to buy these doors before, you know, exactly. if, if real estate continues to continue to double and double and double over the next mm -hmm. dozen, dozens of decades, yeah. then we're going to just have corporate landlords and yeah. housing is going to be way too expensive for the average individual. Exactly. Right. So unless you can figure out how to be a small corporation or medium size or large size corporation yourself, you're not going to be able to own a house and neither yeah. are your kids or your grandkids. Yeah. So. so I guess to add on to my, I guess, reply to your question, um, I would say like, I don't really care too much about the hate comments because I feel like a lot of them are based on impulse. Like they say like whatever that pops up in their head during the time, you know, but when yeah. they get more educated, they'll realize like other things, you know, and also like, you know, on top of that, I feel like it's very normal for people to want to like, I guess, victimize themselves, you know, like, oh, you are the reason why I, I can't pay rent, you know, like <laughs> if that's the story you need to tell yourself to feel better so be it you know um it doesn't affect me personally because i don't let it you know and i feel like there's other things i'd rather care about and as i said you know before like yes i i care about making money i care about growing like my wealth and like making i uh, and like making sure that my family also make wealth along the way you know i know there's gonna be other people who are affected along the way but i guess something else to think about is that if you think about it like a hundred years ago you know, all of our things, real estate, you know, our clothes, they were a heck of a lot more cheaper than it is right now. And it's because we're growing, you know, so I'm going to continue growing. Not everyone will support me and I'm okay with that. Um, the only thing that I care about is making sure that those that have the same mindset as me grow with me, you know? Yeah, for sure. Wow. So would you say you're surrounded by like a lot of people in that, that want to grow with you? Yeah. Um, I'm actually really picky with who I surround myself with. So, um, whether it's with my friends, um, same thing with my family members, like I'm not like close and friendly with all of my family members. We actually do talk about money and business, uh, during dinner <laughs> and every single one of my friends we talk about money every single day like Seriously. there's never a time that we meet up and not talk about money or business it's because we have so much love and and passion for it like it's truly yeah. inner blood um i'm not saying that i won't hang out with people that don't talk talk about money or don't talk about you know businesses but it's like if they have somewhat of an interest and if i can talk about like my successes and i know that they're supporting me even if they're not at my level um that is okay with me too you know i think that some people take a longer time to progress and that's okay as long as they're not judging me i'm not gonna judge them and i do hold those uh kinds of people closely to me as well can you talk to us a little bit about the other things in your life that may pertain to i don't know hobbies faith other interests things that you believe in very passionate about because it seems it sounds like you're super passionate about business finance and growing yourself as a person and those are all really great things yeah and i also see that you had like a a gym insta so that's super awesome like, yeah <laughs> yeah it's, it seems like you're trying to motivate people in a lot of different aspects of your life but yeah. what are the other things that make you you yeah 
So I work out six times a week. I lift weights. I actually started back in high school and then I stopped during the pandemic because of the pandemic, you know, like all of the gyms were closed. And the reason why I like lifting weights is obviously because of health reasons, but also I feel like a badass bitch every yeah. time I work out. Like 90% of the time, it's mostly men working out and I'm the one that's like going hard obviously my form is always perfect because I make sure <laughs> it's correct every yes, single sir. time or I would actually walk up to somebody that I feel like have good form and be like hey can you watch me you know correct me if my form is bad um like I just feel very empowered like if you saw me a week ago I had blonde hair and I walked into the gym with pink hair which is more girlier than blonde hair in my opinion and i feel like a better bitch <laughs> you know like if i feel like my confidence is really low that day i go to the gym and that comes back <laughs> you know and also like from posting myself like working out every day i see that i like motivated i mean i yeah motivated more women to want to work out and they would reach out to me saying like damn like you're so badass like it makes me want to work out i'm like do it and again not for just health purposes not for the physique but it's very empowering you know and in the long run like i want to be able to you know have kids that look up to me well my own kids or other kids look up to me and see like damn she is a strong woman physically <laughs> financially all around you know um yeah, I mean, to some people, it seems kind of dominant masculine, but I don't really care about what other people think. Like, if I feel like it makes me happy, I, you know, I just do it. And to add on, um, I like to do, like, random things. Like, I love to travel, and I love to travel because I have the opportunity to meet new people every single time. And when I do meet new people, we always do new activities. Like I met my best friend at a random trip to Phoenix and uh, we went skydiving actually. Was it the trip I met you at or was it a different No, trip? it was like six months prior to that. Whoa. Yeah. And like, that was like the second day we were together. Well, that was like the best weather in Phoenix as well. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. It was a great bonding Bro, experience. that's such a cool... That'd be so much fun going skydiving. With yeah. Were they like completely random or like... It was kind of random because like my... One of my best friends. So it's two best friends. Okay. So like my first best friend, Brianna. Um, So she actually told me like, hey, um, Milan want to come too. Are you down? I didn't really know who Milan was. She sent a picture of him and I was like, okay, cool. But like, I didn't really think about it. Like every single person I've ever met at this point that are considered famous or popular, I did not know anything about them. I didn't have a clue, you know, about what they do. I mean, I guess I saw their followers, but it never really processed in my head that they were like... I guess, like, um, an influencer, you know? So meeting him in a very, like, like, random situation, like, jumping out of the plane together, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, you you really cannot get better than that. Like, I love to, I love to do things that makes me feel alive because it reminds me on what I'm working towards, you know? Yeah. Um, I go through burnout a lot. What do you mean? Meaning, what does it look like for you to go through burnout? Burnout, meaning I would work 12 hours a day. I eat like one meal a day. Sometimes it's even fast food. Don't even drink water. Um, don't go out. Work out either. You know, it's just like wake up, right to work type of thing. So I would do that probably like three, four months straight, like on and off for like the past two years. And from doing that, um, I would have inconsistency with my work. So I'm not as productive. I'm not posting videos as much. The quality is just trash, you know. Um, and, uh, and also, during the time when I went into $46,000 in debt and going into workaholic mode, I went into burnout. And I lost, like, a sense of life purpose because I grew up very frugal. So I never learn how to do like self-care and reward myself so that was like the highest peak of burnout i've ever been in um 
where like I just did not want to talk to anybody. I did not want to even think about work at all. Like I loved work, but you know you're in your deepest shit when you don't even want to work at all. Oh, wow. Because like you know that it's going to give you like anxiety and you know like you're going to wake up that morning like super shitty. So, yeah, it definitely is like a mental thing, but it physically did affect me heavily because I didn't um I didn't do like every day's like life necessity type of things like eating and like going out, absorbing like the sun type of thing, you know. How do you bounce back from yeah. that type of burnout? Traveling. <laughs> um I started traveling in March of this year and I've been traveling two to three times a month ever since. Oh my gosh. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So whenever what you feel heck? like you're overworking, you just book a trip and then I think like I purposely try to book almost a hundred percent of my days just like hopping around if possible. But I know for like productivity purpose, I try to be in Philly for a week straight to just catch up on work and then I go hopping around again. Do you ever feel like traveling can kind of be a bit of a bandage to like some type of deeper issue possibly because i know that i kind of go through something similar yeah. and then like i can do something that makes me feel definitely better and you go on like two three trips a month and like it definitely gets you back to a point that you can exert energy don't worry about it <laughs> that you can exert energy again but when you travel and then like i don't know does it ever make does it actually solve the problem or do you think that there's a better solution to what you may go through in terms of burnout or is there any way for you to sustain a workflow while doing something that kind of gives you the same satisfaction that but uh, more sustained yeah. compared to traveling well i would say in my situation it's completely different than most people but I did question myself a lot, like, you know, like, is traveling a way for me to, like, Escape. run away? Yeah. And I have a life coach, and she asked the exact same thing. And in a sense, yes. Mainly because, again, like, initially going into entrepreneurship, I've always wanted to have my own apartment, to have a pet, you know, and to just be on my own. Yes, I live in a nice house now with, like, a lawn and stuff, but I still want to be on my own, you know? There is a reason why I'm traveling so much. is because I don't want to be home. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I don't think it really affects how much money I make because the highest amount I made within a month, which is 90000 I actually was out of the city, like, 80% of the month. And I wasn't really working either. <laughs> so it's like at this point, wow. it's almost running on autopilot. <laughs> so, um, no, I learned that even if I travel like 100% out of the month, I would still make the same amount or even more. So why don't you just move out? It's because I tried to move out and my mom was in tears, like... It's hard to see your mom cry. Oh, yeah. I know how that saying. feels. <laughs> yeah. And also, like, she said, like, you're not ready right now, Lena. Like, you're you're 20 years old, you know? And once you leave, I know you'll, like, you you'll will never, never come, come back. back. She's not wrong, though. Yeah. But, um, yeah. So, she wanted me to consider leaving when I'm 22. I'm 20 right now. And I was like, there's no freaking way that I'm waiting another two years to leave. It's just, there's no way. And then my sister was like, why not meet her in the middle? Like, why not just leave, like, when you're 21? Is that why you said six months from now you're going to New York? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you're a March kid? March? I'm planning to... Okay, well, I officially want to move out once I buy my first real estate, whether yeah. it's an apartment complex or a resort. How big? Maybe two million max. Two million? How many units? What's your criteria? Man, it depends on cash flow. I mean, like, yeah. I think I want to prioritize buying a business that already make cash flow. And I also want to do market research to see potentially how much it could make once I get the property. You know sure. what I mean? Like, it's not like a normal, like, buy and flip. 
this is like a different niche right here. You know, yeah. like this yeah, is yeah. commercial side. Um, I'm actually in the process of making this happen for sure. Like when I say like, I'll, I'll do something eight, eight out of 10, not nine out of 10, but <laughs> eight out of 10, I do actually do it. So, um, I'm trying to buy a resort and how I'm trying to make that happen is by shadowing someone that's already doing it. Oh yeah. So it's like a JV um, type of thing. Yeah. Well, that's the so best way to do it. I actually um, hopped on a call with somebody last week. I was out in Orlando for FinCon and my friend Cody, Cody Davis from bigger pockets. Uh, he texted me saying, Hey Lena, um, I finally, bought that resort like i told you about why not fly over and we can collaborate and i was like okay bet so i hopped on a call with him two days ago and we talked a bit and he was like when can you come i was like next month like i was already booked out by like 70 percent, but i was like i need to come like there's no way because like i was planning on cold calling every single hotel in oh the entire gosh. country for me to work for free to just shadow and mm -hmm. learn about their process he basically offered me the opportunity on a silver platter. I would be stupid to not come over, even if I don't make money from any deals with him, you know? I think I just want to be... I just want the opportunity to just be there to visually see how it works to operate this resort. And it's also a way to um, show to him that I'm serious. Oh, yeah, Like, sure. after that call, I, <laughs> I booked a flight within that next 10 minutes. You know, it was like a five hundred, yeah, five hundred dollar yeah. flight, and I sent it to him. He was like, "Okay, bet." You know, um, so yeah, like my plan is to go over there, hopefully learn about seller financing as much as possible, and to have at least like a hundred k in reserve. Dude, that's like the cheapest mentorship you could probably get. Yeah, right. I'm paying like three hundred a month to learn under him. It's barely anything. He is a humble guy. Um, yeah, yeah. Is he, oh, for sure. He does seller finance a lot, right? Yeah, commercial he, deals too. He purchased his first apartment complex when he was nineteen. Okay. Oh, that's sick. Yeah. yeah. Cody, 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 Cody. Is is that the twenty year old Cody? Twenty one year old like Cody? He's like, yeah, he's older now. Oh, he's yeah. older now. He's like twenty three. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. That's pretty sick, man. Yeah. Uh, that's I wanna, really I'll, sick. Well, I want to go back to the life coach thing because you talked about you you having a life coach. Can you tell us like what did you get the life coach for if there was anything specific that you wanted to work on or like what are the things that you guys generally work on mm. between you and your life coach yeah so i hired my life coach um during the time when i was burning out so this was when i was working 12 hours a day trying to build out my current coaching business and um the reason why i hired her was because I felt like there, there was a disconnect between me and like living life. Like again, like I didn't have a life purpose. Like I felt like I'm only breathing and living to make money right now. But where is like the money coming? I mean, where's the money going to, you know? Like even buying health insurance. I didn't have health insurance since 12, I think. And that's from the, that's from the Obamacare, by oh, the way. That's crazy. So like my family doesn't believe in health insurance because... Back in Cambodia, like, no one have health insurance. That's not a thing. If you're sick, you go to the doctor, and that's when you're old. So they think it's a waste of money to have health insurance. Even right now, I don't even have health insurance because right. I haven't even pulled the strings to make it happen. I'm so used to not having health insurance. You got an HSA? Bro, I, would not, all right, I wouldn't go skydiving again without health insurance. <laughs> Yo, he had no I got, oh, I got, he had no health insurance. I got, he got into I got a, a accident. snowboarding accident with no health insurance. And fortunately, I qualified for something, but like that's kind of what got me into real estate. Like, I was literally dropped out of college, working full time, about to buy my first house. And then there was like a three month period where I didn't have health insurance because my dad quit his job. And then I went snowboarding. <laughs> then I, I got a broken wrist, four broken ribs, and a collapsed lung. Oh, you were knocked out unconscious too. No, well, like maybe you I don't just, know. I don't just, remember. You it. just woke up in the hospital. No, 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 right? Nah, nah, bro. I drove two and a half hours back. What the heck? By myself in the snow, yeah. With the, <laughs> with the uh, one. But anyway, <laughs> but anyways, like, well, fortunately, since you're younger, and I think like like I qualified for something called Cobra, and you probably would as well because like you're younger. Man, but, I don't know. I make. But a lot like, of if money. you're if you're like, you literally just said you're like <laughs> I like to do like spontaneous fun things like. Make sure, like, like if you go snowboarding or skiing or anything that's dangerous, like, 
I would recommend getting health insurance. Man, it's because I'm so used to being lucky. It's not that expensive. Come <laughs> no, no, on, no, 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 no. I know. I I pay like six hundred a month on just life coach. So my priorities. Bro, are, what? Are, are <laughs> health insurance bad. is like five hundred a month for so, a really good no, plan. No, no, I know. So how and you can get an HSA. I'm so used do you have an HSA? Have no, here's why. Listen, it's because when I made my first 50K, I was so happy, right? And okay. then I told my mom, like, Mom, I made 50K. Now I can afford health insurance and you don't have to worry about covering it. And she shamed me. Like, she was like, you love wasting money, don't you? That sounds like trauma. Dang. Oh, my God. That sounds awful. <laughs> oh, my God. Even now, I'm like. You've talked to your life coaches like, what is trauma in your life and what is actually my personal belief? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, my priorities are a bit off right now. <laughs> so, how did you find your life coach? Uh, my friend, Brianna, told me about her life coach. Okay. Yeah. So, my life coach, she's a YouTuber. Really? And she makes content about, like, the psychological side of, like, choices that you make on, like, a, on, like, a everyday Is she a 10? Thing. A 10? Is she a 10, but say no. Uh, I don't, I don't, don't, don't want to like rate what? her. What? <laughs> Bro, oh, what, rate her. Rate, 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 rate your life She's going to watch it. Rate your life coach. Jesse, you're married, bro. What? No, not like no, that. No, it's not like, like that. Come on. Like I that. get it. Get your head out of the gutter, bro. Damn. This is what single men be doing. Saying no. <laughs> it got caught out of nowhere. <laughs> 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 oh uh, yeah but yes um don't have health insurance and i think about it every single day i'm like today you I, should just get yeah, the health insurance to put you know some peace so of mind up? i just bought insurance for my coaching business yesterday so, and, so your and I coaching business, business is insured. insurance over my own health insurance yo business is nothing so without do health. you go to the doctor every year or no no we don't what about what about dentist no we don't I know it's fucked. <laughs> well, no, 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 no. So, like, out of all the masterminds that you join, it sounds like the archetype, the average age is like late twenties to average thirties. Am I wrong? Or you're right. I'm pretty right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the masterminds that I join, these are people in their like forties to like 50, early fifties, mm -hmm. and like they've been in business for a solid like fifteen ish years. You know, twenty or like maybe they've been in for eight, but like they've learned mm -hmm. a whole lot and they surround themselves with people you know who are farther down the line and they have families and everything mm. oh dude the priorities change like really 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 fast once you turn a certain age or once a certain like life circumstance happens to you and it's just like i live my life kind of based off of the wisdom that i get from these like older cats i mean that's me too I get that. Do you hang around these 40 something year olds, but bro? But they're not 40 year olds. Um, it's I... different. They don't know what it's like, bro. They're living life loose. Really? That's, it seems like I'm just making an assumption. Okay, okay. Yeah, so um, I have mentors. Like currently, I have mentors that are in their mid 20s and they're kind of like me. Like they dropped out, went into entrepreneurship at a young age, and now they're multimillionaires. So. Um, I tend to resonate with younger entrepreneurs for sure. For sure. Yeah. So what are you trying to get to? What's your life purpose? Is it to actually make a billion dollars in life or are you trying to go much deeper than that? Yeah. So I would say um, not to make a billion. I think I might want that after I achieve my first goal so i am a big fan of alex hermosi and he talked about how his wife layla purchased i think twenty five thousand dollars worth of worth of calls with grant cardone and he hopped on like one or two calls with him and he shared about like what grant said or whatever during their interview and he shared that grants recommend that if you want to build wealth you need to own something that's tangible that also cash flow, but not necessarily like a long-term rental. He's talking about a business. So 
what I'm trying to do is buy like a 40, 50 million dollar hotel by 25. That is hopefully by Vegas Strip. <laughs> and um, I want my family to either sell their business or let me take over it and automate their business out and have them help take over the hotel business. And I don't need them to. It's just that they need a different life purpose than what they have right now. And I want them to be like, I want them to be involved. Everyone talks about building generational wealth for their own family, like for their own kids. But I want everyone within my family, my immediate family to grow with me. So with my mom, like she's currently working as a cashier here and there, you know, with our shop right now. And, you know, she's making a lot of money and stuff. But like a lot of business owners, they don't know how to automate their business. Like I know a lot of people that own a business that make even like a million a year and they can't just drop everything and leave, you know, and their family rely on them as well. So my first goal is to take over the family business and to streamline that. And then um, right now I'm trying to buy a resort and then I want to buy like a hotel after and keep on buying more hotels from there for the rest of my next five years. And again, get that $40 million hotel and have my mom help take over the event venue side of things. My sister, she is kind of like the management of our family business and I want her to take over like the restaurant and bar and nightlife section of the hotel my brother he's into financials so I would have him look over the financials for the hotel as well and I want my kids and like my nieces or whatever to say like oh we are in the hotel industry but we have other projects on the side and stuff you know what I mean so and with this type of you know business number one is tangible number two it will appreciate because if it's nearby Vegas Strip it's obviously going to appreciate and also um, cash flow isn't like comparable to a long-term rental. You can definitely control the amount of cash flow that you make um, from a business, you know. And so that's my end goal right there. Like I want to leave a legacy behind. Um, and also I want to make sure that my family also have a name and that they win with me, that everyone, everyone within my immediate family, they're all millionaires, you know. And on top of that, I want to be able to share my journey and also help other people grow their wealth as well, not through just traditional real estate, but how to actually own a business, how to automate their business and actually expand it. So, yeah. And it sounds like the prelude to Crazy Rich Asians. Man, I think I would be you want a, a movie? perfect cast. On you want to be Rich part of a movie? No, actually, you want to make let, a movie. Let me, <laughs> no, let me tell you what's up. I actually saw an article under, I think, Business Insider, and they posted about um, needing cast members for Squid Games, a reality TV show out in the UK. I applied. You need to be at least 21. Oh. I mean, I'm like 20, but I wanted to shoot my shot anyways. I didn't give a fuck. So I needed to make a video answering a few questions whatever i submitted it and they reached out to me just a month ago because they really liked my application oh, gosh. And like the first sentence i said was i need to say something i'm actually 20 and i just wanted to apply anyways and if i'm not qualified just let me know now and she said actually when's your birthday i was like december 5th she said well we are planning to cast and actually do the movie from January to February. So oh my gosh. You would meet the deadline of being 21, meaning if I were to be in this TV show, that I would be the youngest Squid Game cast member. Squid, Squid Game. Game in the UK. Wait, 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 wait. What's the difference? Oh, oh, because Squid Game's played all around the world. Yeah. Right? So. I could potentially win like a four million dollar. I think four or four hundred million. Wait. I don't know. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You could like lose a, your life. Like real... You could lose your life. <laughs> it's a no? real it's a real squid. Yeah. It's... No. A, what is but I'm really hoping I do get casted because I technically did had a second round interview with them. So I'm waiting in October. Bro. We got a movie star too. You got your hand in too many cookie jars, girl. No. Okay. <laughs> You're good, bro. So, like, are you a good actor then? Wait, let's wait. Hold up, 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 bro. My legs are good. Let me, let me pee first. <laughs> Thanks, bro. I need to pee.
We are we are going to go on break. <laughs> All right. So I just want to add something for selfish purposes in regards to our podcast because it seems like you've really blown up in terms of personal branding and you're really good at social media. And we want to get um, up there, not for like ego or for personal gain necessarily as much as just like we just want to increase our our reach and we want to we want resonate. to get haters we want to get haters yeah yeah so that's how, that's how you know you made it on social yeah. media could you give us like some advice in terms of you know how we can go about reaching more people with our podcast how can we go about getting even um more relevant guests to be on our podcast and how do we know we're on the right direction? Okay, so two things. Number one, look at your competitors. So look at the top podcast people, whether it's in the entrepreneur space or even in just like a normal podcast, you know, see what blows up for them. Kind of copy, but make it better. So it's not really copying at the end of the day, you know? And also I feel like just... Bringing in people that have a very colorful personality with an interesting backstory always helps. So in this case, I'm not trying to toot my torn, but like... No, girl with pink hair. Toot my horn. Toot horn. Toot my horn. Was English your second language? No. It's weird. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So English is my first language. But going back, I have like lava hair type of hair. Lava girl hair. Right now, you know what I mean? So there's that being 20 years old. So you already chose a pretty good speaker to make this series thank interesting you, you know thank, what you I mean? co- thank you for coming on <laughs> i'm driving an hour and a yeah. half yeah <laughs> yeah and then like number two i would say going to different conventions which you're ar- you're already doing that you know but i would say growing your own personal branding is also as important mainly because if i were to have my own podcast i'm pretty sure it will would blow up because there is an association with my own branding as well you know um unfortunately i would say like the way i blew up is not the way i want to be blown up but how did you blow up i just had to cater to what people wanted like for example saying like oh when i was 19 years old i made this much oh you followed the algorithm yeah that's why you Okay. Oh. Because, like, if you really think about it, like, it's not about what you want. It's about what people want. So if people want to hear about how you were 19 years old when you made, like, $126,000 by doing this, this, and that, yeah, you will get haters, but you're giving them what they want, you know? That's what all of the other creators are doing. They're basically giving what the people want. So what you can do is probably post on your story and ask people what they want to hear from you. Maybe look at your competitors' content and check their comment section. If you think about it, your competitors are also looking at the comment section. And likely, that's going to be their next video. Whoa. That's so freaking good. Yeah. You got any more gems for us? Keep on going. You're on fire. Okay. I mean... <laughs> I know. If, if you don't, like, no pressure. No, no. It's cool. It's cool. So, let's say you want to blow up on TikTok. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, all, like, all you have to do is search up a certain niche in the search bar and then check the recent last three months of content and then sort it by popularity. So anything that blew up within the last three months, and that could be your next content because technically it is pretty fresh. Three months, it's not too long. Sometimes it takes three months to even blow up, you know? So that's the second way to find topics but i would say looking at the comment section and seeing what is considered the most liked comment would be your best bet with blowing up well that's so good so if you weren't known as the girl who made six figures by the time she was 19 like what would you have wanted to be known for what would have been your preferred audience I mean, I still want to be known as the girl that made six figures at 19, but it's more like I want people to think of me as simply a girl that is relatable and ambitious, you know? Like, I've had a few hate comments that said they're tired of hearing me brag about how much money I make. I don't mean to. It's just that that's what people want to see, you know? It motivates them. There's two different types of 
value you offer to people when making content. Number one, it's education. And number two is motivation. So for me, unfortunately, even if I make content that's educational, I've been making content that's more motivational for the past two, three years. So that's what people want. So when I switch to educational, you know, it's not going to get that much views. And I'm saying like, I'm not happy with the way I blew up because in all reality, maybe my educational content isn't doing well because I'm not consistent with it enough. You know, like maybe if I continued with it long enough that that would blow up more than my motivational content. Yeah, for sure. So are you 100% in charge of all of your social media or do you hire that up? Uh, I am in charge of my social media by like 80% right now. So 80% meaning like I still like and comment. I still post in my stories, but I hire somebody to reply to my DMs. <laughs> so I don't really respond to DMs unless I follow them. And then also I do have somebody that comment for me, um, reply to comments, I mean. But other than that, it is operated by me majority i think i might want to back away 100 percent in like another two three years nice you got last thoughts um i don't know man i wish we any... i wish we can talk more about like mentorships and like yeah no, we right, can fine. get you we yeah. can no we can get you back when you after you move to new york we'll come out to your what sweet do you mean? apartment that's like another six months yeah at least six months yeah that's good yeah, enough well, we gotta go to new york Dude, there's gonna there's gonna be so much progression in that next six months mm -hmm. like that'd be so sick we will be talking to like, yes a green-haired girl that time yes can you tell us about what what you think your apartment would look like oh envision it right now put yeah. it out put it out into the universe billionaires row no i don't know yeah, come maybe on. I mean, I wouldn't know yet because like I really you want do a loft. Want, you want a loft? I, I do want a penthouse. But as I said, like I travel so much. And You're not going to be able to enjoy it, right? I mean, if I have a roommate, I need to think about them as well. True. Like I can't just want like a $10,000 a month penthouse and then have her pay half if that's if, if yeah. that's something that she can't afford. And yeah. if she only paid 2000 she might feel shitty. <laughs> you know so i don't know yet um honestly i don't think i care too much about my own space i think i really do like traveling so i think that's more of like a bigger focus the reason why i want to move to new york is because that's where everyone go to for conventions and networking like it's like again like all of the opportunities will land on my on my lap you know like i don't need to travel as much because everything happens in new york honestly i might not even travel that much really thinking about it now if everyone keeps on coming everyone's to new coming york. to you what yeah. happens in new york tell us tell us like what are the couple Maybe events that come to you all top of your the mind? conventions happen there which ones i don't know i'm just saying like there's always events like I've i don't never been to new york no, i don't convention, know about bro. it as much because i'm not seeking for it either okay. you yeah. know Something else to keep in mind is that I already have a lot of connections in the finance content creation community. Like, I know almost everybody in there at this point. You're trying to get into NFTs. I see you. I think, <laughs> I, think oh, I want to tap into Miami, another, another community. I don't like Miami. No. Nah. I don't like Miami. I what about like Vegas? I don't know yet. I feel like there's way more conventions I'm going there. next week. Yeah, way more. And that's where you're trying to buy a hotel. So would you buy a hotel, casino, or just hotel? Well, it depends on what's on market. Yeah, whatever comes or whatever deal, it's all about the deal. You yeah, know, and look, I, I, I moved. Like I moved to this house, not because of the location, but because it was a sick deal. And afterwards, I realized, dang, I'm really close to Philly. I'm like 15 minutes from the Philly airport. This is a pretty sick location. Yeah, it is a pretty good location. It just happened. Sure. It just happened that way. Yeah. So whatever happens, happens. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Could you leave the viewers or listeners with? one last point or takeaway that you would want to give to them as a gift? Yeah, I guess I'll give you guys my tattoo quote that I'm planning to get in another month, <laughs> which is we live life in abundance, meaning even if you think you're failing and it's the end of the world, you have another day to make it better. And there's always going to be more opportunities if you see life in a very optimistic way. You know, like when I lost thousands of dollars and even went into 46 
thousand dollars in credit card debt. I was very optimistic. I was like, at least I'm 20 years old, you know, like at least I'm on like the same plane level as other 20 years old that have more than forty thousand dollars in debt because of college, you know, like I have nothing to complain about. Heck, even if I had like a hundred thousand dollars in debt, I don't think I would have been upset either because I have at least another eighty years in my life to correct that, you know. So just be really thankful with what you have. Yeah. For sure. All right. Thanks a lot. I really appreciate you coming out all this way. I'm sorry you got stuck in traffic again. I know I said that like for the fifth time. No, I yeah. felt bad because I was late. Oh. Well, yeah. we were all late, so. Oh. No, we were late because you said you were going to be late. <laughs> oh. Again, that's my fault. But again, like it did set like 250 and then it jumped by like, another 30 minutes after that. Yeah. <laughs> Dang. Not a big deal. But Thank you guys so much. I hope you guys enjoyed the Not a Genius podcast. Follow, where can the viewers follow you on? You guys can follow me on Lena Owen, L E N A O E U N, on Instagram or TikTok. Awesome. Thanks a lot, Lena. No problem.